The anatomy of, of the posterior pharynx and the, the oral pharynx uh, is such that obviously when we have food and we put it in our mouth, it's a larger cavity. As it proceeds back into the posterior pharynx, which is just behind the tongue and then above the vocal cords, things start to narrow down. And as we swallow, there's a mechanism that allows food to only go into the esophagus, which is right next to the vocal cords. The epiglottis will close down on the top of the trachea at the vocal cords to prevent the food from going down into the trachea. When somebody chokes, obviously that mechanism has been either disturbed or there's some issue that the patient has where they're not able to coordinate a swallowing mechanism. And that's when food can actually enter into that posterior pharynx just above the vocal cords. It's narrower, so therefore it can take a piece of food and actually lodge into that posterior pharynx. And certainly as you go further and further down the airway, the, the diameter gets smaller and smaller. And so a piece of, of, of food, which may not have been an obstruction in the upper airway, if it keeps falling further into the airway, will form an obstruction. And, and these get harder and harder to remove as they get deeper into the lungs.